Hi there, I'm Jim, the owner of Pure Wave Audio and the Studio Edge Pro Audio Recording Series. With 40 years of commercial sound engineering and mastering experience, plus a bachelor's in electrical engineering, I am dedicated to empowering professional and inspiring recording engineers. Stay tuned and let me guide you through the exciting world of pro audio recording. Today, we are talking about outboard gear versus plugins. With every project you're working on, you'll likely need to use some signal processing like EQs, compressors, reverb, or some sort of enhancement. This leaves you with two options, plugins or analog outboard gear. Outboard gear has been a major part of professional tracking, mixing, and mastering, but over the years, software plugins have gained a stronghold in the audio community. Companies like SSL, SPL, Universal Audio, and Rupert Neve Designs manufacture some of the best outboard gear available. They've developed these reputations after being used over and over on hit records by major league engineers. Whether it be SPL known for their Transient Designer or Universal Audio known for their LA-2A compressor, each model has its own unique sound and characteristics, which is what makes outboard gear so desirable. If you're mixing in the box and also using outboard gear while you're mixing in the box, it's a good idea to have outstanding A to D and D to A converters. Companies like Lynx and Merging are known to have a clean, uncolored sound with the ability to convert at 192 kilohertz. When running audio back and forth between the analog domain and the digital domain, the use of quality converters is essential to maintaining the cleanest possible sound. If outboard gear is either out of your budget or you just don't have room for it, high quality plugins can meet your needs. Brainworks, Universal Audio, Waves, SPL, and SSL offer great sounding EQs and compressors, and their mastering plugins are used by professionals all around the world on a regular basis. One nice advantage of using plugins is that they could also be used in multiple instances of your project. So when you buy an SPL Transient Designer as a plugin, you get to use it as on many tracks as you want before running out of processing power. Some plugins are bundled with an add-on DSP card to help keep the strain off the host computer CPU. So make sure you have Thunderbolt or PCIe slots for your DSP technology. Some argue that plugin versions don't really sound exactly like the real thing, but this statement is technically flawed. The manufacturer will go find the best version of the unit that is available to model, and maybe your personal model doesn't sound like the highly regarded one that everybody else is taking measurements of. But in any case, when someone mentions that it's 95% of the way there, but not exact, I remind them that every vintage unit is gonna have at least 5% difference in sound after being used for over 20 years. And every voice you record sounds different on the microphone and reacts differently through the processing that you're using. So why does it matter? At this point, you may be struggling with what to get and where in the signal chain to put it. So here are a few tips. If you're mainly just tracking, then channel strips are nice and will allow you to dial in about 95% of your sound while adding character on the way in. This way, when you mix, you're just finessing a few little things in the box. If you feel that you'd rather process in the analog domain after you're already in the box, then you could route effect sends out to your D to A converter to the analog gear, then back in the A to D converter. In this case, buying separate signal processors instead of a channel strip would be better. Though some channel strips do have inserts on each part of the chain, so you could use each processor independently. They call this type of signal flow usage a hybrid system. If you wanna learn all about selecting gear and putting a system together the right way, then check out my course, the Studio Edge Pro Audio Recording Series, Volume 2, Building a Recording Studio, Acoustics, Gear Selection, and Implementation, which will teach you all about it. These YouTube videos are supported by those of you that have purchased my courses and purchased gear from PureWave Audio. Check the links in the description, and thank you for all your support. So what are all the boundaries of all this, and how does it apply? Well, let's think about recording a vocalist like Jeff Tate or Josh Groban. 
These are some of the world's best vocalists that have a super huge dynamic range. And if we think about recording, let's say, through a channel strip or a mic pre and a compressor, compared to just recording through a mic pre into your A to D conversion, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice because the vocalist will have, let's say, 120 dB a range. Let's say your DAW system is, you know, 80 dB a range. And then you're going to process stuff after the fact. So, for instance, with Josh Groban, he has songs where he's like, Come with me to the sea in a world where, you know, it's quiet and then it gets really loud. And you're missing all that dynamic range of the 120 dB. You need to get it within the 80. And so that's why you use a compressor to get rid of some of that dynamic range. So in this case, you would actually put the compressor on, get it to maybe a 40 dB of dynamic range from the quietest to the loudest, and then get that to an area where it won't peak. And that now means you have some meat to work with when you're doing your extra processing in the box. Now, you just can't slap a compressor on and assume it's gonna work. You have to know how to use it. Some compressors are nicer, like the SBL Track 1 or the Channel 1, where it's a little bit automatic and you can just dial how much you want in instead of understanding attack and release times. But if you are gonna use compression, make sure you're not destroying your audio you're using it to its best ability to get some good signal on tape. In other words, good signal on the A to D conversion all the way through. So now your plugins are working in a right range because taking something that's at minus 80 while he's whispering and trying to use one compressor to do that at that point is just way too difficult. It's just way too difficult. With all this said, be sure to factor your budget, space, and desired sounds to choose what's right for you. For more information on Boutique Gear, please go to purewaveaudio.com and for expert education on the physics of sound, gear selection, building a studio, acoustics, and everything you ever want to know about selecting and recording a drum kit, which most find daunting, then check out the studioedge.com. Thank you for your support and have a great day.